Hi, I'm Nick with Zingtree. This is the fourth video in our Zingtree basic series. We're going to cover logic nodes and continue building out the example workflow we started in the last video. If you're just joining us in this series, I highly recommend you go back and start from the beginning. Let's start by opening the example workflow we created in the last video. To refresh, we've been building out the returns process for a fictional company called International Displays. So far, we've used content nodes and tree nodes, but now it's time to incorporate logic nodes into the mix. Over the course of the video, we're going to set up a logic node to help steer our agent into the correct branch of the workflow, as well as build out a few more content nodes. But before we get into building, let's talk about what logic is and what logic nodes do. Logic expressions are if-then statements that look at a set of conditions to see if something is true or false. Logic nodes use these expressions to make decisions on where an agent should be directed in the workflow. When combined with variables, logic nodes create powerful processes that simplify your workflows and take unnecessary work off your agent's plates by getting them to the next best action faster and with fewer questions needing to be asked. Remember that variables can be passed into Zingtree from a variety of sources, the most common being data entry fields like the ones we created in our last video. You can also pass in variables from a CRM or call center through a URL as merge variables or as return values from a webhook. If you want more information on these last examples, be sure to check out our Help Center. Now that we've talked about what logic is, let's get back into our build. In our last video, we left off having just created a new node connected to our node about customer returns. Let's select the new node and make it a logic node. The first thing you'll probably notice about the logic node is there are fewer panels than a content node. That's because logic nodes really only do one thing, and that's perform logic. Right now, this step is titled Continue, but let's update that to something more unique, since it will be looking at the data collected on our last content node and determining if the customer is eligible for return. Let's title it Return Eligibility Check. In the Logic panel, the first thing we see is a drop-down menu. All new logic nodes default to simple logic, but you also have the option to use advanced and random logic. You are limited to using either simple, advanced, or random on any single logic node. If you wanted to use simple statements and advanced statements, you would need to have two separate nodes connected to each other. We won't be using random or advanced logic in our example workflow, since their use cases are a little beyond a basics course. Random logic is pretty straightforward and really only used with A-B testing. Advanced logic is used more often, so I'd like to give a brief overview of it before circling back to simple logic. If you want more information on advanced and random logic, then as usual, you can find it in our help center. In Zingtree, let's go ahead and change the dropdown to Advanced Logic and then click the green Add Logic Expression button. While simple logic expressions limit you to examining one variable at a time, Advanced Logic opens up the ability to examine multiple variables and conditions in a single expression utilizing ands and ors. You'll use the expression field to write out your logic. Since you're writing all of the logic statement, there's more room for errors. We have an entire article on debugging Advanced Logic statements in our Help Center that you'll want to check out if you're going this route. Now let's click our drop-down menu and change it back to simple logic. Notice we get a warning message saying that we may lose data by switching. If we created either simple or advanced statements, they'd be lost when we switched back and forth. Since we haven't typed anything in yet, we don't have anything to worry about. So go ahead and click the red Change Node Type button. The simple logic node is designed to be easy to use and foolproof. Unlike the advanced logic node, you don't need to type out the logic expression. You'll choose a variable and the operator from the drop-down menus, and then type in the value to look for. An important thing to remember with logic nodes is that the order of your expressions matters. When the logic node is reached in your workflow, it starts at the top and works its way down the list of expressions looking for the first condition, otherwise known as a rule, that applies. Once a rule is met, the logic node will jump to the node associated with the rule and not look at any of the others. If the logic node goes through the entire list of rules and none are met, then we can have the logic node jump to whatever node we tell it to. Let's put this into context with our example. Our fictional company, International Displays, has a 30-day return policy. Any returns after 30 days need to be denied. Since this is the primary gating factor determining a customer's eligibility for a return, we want it to be the first rule our logic node checks. The next thing we need to check is whether the customer is looking for a return in exchange or a return and refund. If you remember on our previous content node, we set up data entry fields for our agent to collect the number of days since purchase and whether this is a return in exchange or return and refund. 
we're going to use those variables to bring the collected data into our logic node so we can automatically direct our agent to the proper path in the workflow. First up, we need to set our 30-day return gate. On our logic node, select the variable drop-down menu and choose day since purchase. In the operator drop-down, we'll choose the greater than symbol, and for our value, we'll type in 30, since that's the maximum number of days to allow a return. Now we need to create the node this rule goes to. We'll click the drop-down menu under Node and use the same process we did when connecting buttons in our previous video. Let's select the new node, make it a content node, and then change the node title to Return Denied. We'll circle back and finish building this new step of our workflow after we've set up the rest of our logic node's rules. Back on the logic node, click the green Add button again. This time for the variable, we're going to choose Type, and our operator will be the equal sign. Before we input the value, let's go back to our Returns Content node and find the Data Entry field with the variable name Type. When a logic node is looking for text like we have in our list box options, the text we enter into the value of the logic expression must be an exact match to what's in the list box. That means making sure we use the exact same words, spacing, spelling, and letter cases. Returning to our logic node, let's type in return and refund in the value and then create a new node. Let's go ahead and make this new node a content node and rename it return and refund. The reason I'm renaming these nodes as I go is because I don't want to have to do any sleuthing to try and remember which node is connected to which logic expression later on. We'll go back to our logic node one more time and click the green Add button. We'll choose the type variable again from the drop-down list, the equals operator, and in the value field, type in return and exchange. Again, it needs to be an exact match to our list box option. Lastly, we'll create one more new node, make it a content node, and name it return and exchange. For this example, we won't need to direct our agents anywhere if no rules apply, because one of the rules will apply every time. A few final points on logic nodes before we dive back into content nodes and wrap up this video. We've just scratched the surface on what logic is able to do in your workflows. I highly recommend you take time and check out the articles and videos related to logic nodes in our help center. We'll also be creating more content showing advanced use cases for logic, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Okay, now let's do a little refresher on content nodes by building out the three new nodes we just created. We'll go ahead and start with the return denied node. This node will be pretty straightforward since it won't have any buttons or data entry fields. In our content editor, we'll input text letting the customer know they aren't eligible for a return on their product because it's past the 30-day return period. We can utilize our product and days since purchase variables so our agent doesn't have to look back in the workflow for the information. The text I've gone with is, I'm sorry, but your product variable is not eligible for return. I see that it was purchased days since purchase variable days ago. Unfortunately, we can't accept returns more than 30 days from the purchase date. Now, if this were a real company, we'd likely have the agent ask if there was anything else the customer needed help with and have action buttons for those options. But for the sake of time, we'll call this step done and move on to our other two nodes. The return refund and return exchange nodes are going to connect to a document node that will create a PDF based on the information collected in the workflow and automatically email the PDF to the customer. We'll be covering both the email and document nodes in our next video. To get prepped for that though, let's start by selecting our return refund node and creating our agent script in the content editor. The text I've gone with is, got it, I will get this process for you now. You will be receiving an email from us with detailed instructions on shipping your product back to us. The email will also include a link to print out your return authorization. Please include that in your shipment. Your refund will be processed back to your credit card within four days of receiving your return. Please feel free to reply to the email should you have any questions or concerns. Now we'll create an action button and title it Generate RMA.
Next, create a new connected node. We'll learn how to set this new node up to send a return merchandise authorization document to the customer in our next video. So let's go back to our return exchange node and finish it. We'll start by clicking into the content editor and creating the script for our agent. Our first line will be, we can certainly exchange your product variable for another. Which model would you prefer? We want our agent to be able to choose the replacement monitor from the list box, but we still have more text to add to our script and don't want that list box to be at the bottom of the new text. This is where we can use a template. Templates are special codes you can insert into your content areas, which include other data or perform special functions. Let's click the template icon. You'll see a list describing the function of all the available templates. All you have to do is click one of the options to insert it into your content node. In this case, we want to choose the put the data entry area at the cursor option. You'll see we have a variable surrounded by two hashtags on either side. This means when we create our data entry field, instead of appearing at the bottom of the screen, it'll appear where the template code is in the middle of our script. Now let's add the last of our text to the content area. It'll be the same text as our return refund node. Got it. I will get this process for you now. You will be receiving an email from us with detailed instructions on shipping your product back to us. The email will also include a link to print out your return authorization. Please include that in your shipment. Please feel free to reply to the email should you have any questions or concerns. Next, we'll create our data entry field for the monitor type and add a new field and choose list box as the type. On our returns node, we had a similar list box and used the variable name type. Remember that we don't want to repeat variable names for new pieces of information because it will overwrite any previously collected info. So instead of using type as the variable name, I'm going with exchange underscore four. I'll give the label the same name. For our list options, we'll use our fictional product names, Pixel Plus widescreen and portable display. Lastly, we'll need to connect this to our RMA node. Add an action button, name it generate RMA, and this time, instead of creating a new node, select the Generate RMA node from the list. We'll go ahead and break there for now and pick this back up in our next video, where we'll finish off our sample workflow with document, email, and link nodes. See you there.